Hello students, today we will learn about email. So, what is basically email? So, email is nothing but a service which allows us to send the message in electronic mode over the internet. So, it offers an efficient, inexpensive and real-time mean of distributing information among the people. As we know that each user of email is assigned a unique name for his email account and there is a specific fee and that name is called as what email address. So basically different users can send and receive messages according to the email address. So what is the format of email address? It is generally of the form username at the rate domain name. Let's take an example. For example, webmaster at the rate tutorialpoint.com. So it is an email address where webmaster is a username and tutorials.com is nothing but what a domain name. So username and domain name are separated by at the rate symbol. So email addresses are not guest sensitive that is to be remembered and spaces are not allowed in email address. So that is nothing but the email address format. Now let's see the email message format. So email message comprises of different components like your email header, greeting, text and signature. So these components are described in the following diagram. As you can see in this diagram, in the email header, what is there? From date to subject CC. Then in greeting, I'll include a greeting part that is whatever things I need to greet. Text part and signature part. Let's explore these fields in detail. So the first five lines of email, it's called email header. That is header part comprises of following fields. From date to subject CC and BCC. So from field indicates what? The sender address. That is who wants to send the email. Date field indicates what? The date when the email was sent. And the two field indicates the recipient's address, that is to whom the email is sent. Subject field basically the purpose of the email, that is you will elaborate. That is suppose I have to write a application to the department, that is why I was not able to attend the college. So what will be the subject? That the leave application and in attachment I'll attach the medical certificate or whatever will be the required document and CC is nothing but carbon copy it includes those recipients address who wants to keep the information but not exactly the intended recipient that is I want that I should inform them also then I'll include those people in CC what is BCC BCC is black carbon copy when I'll use this option that is when we do not want one or more recipients to know that someone else was copied on the message. At that time, I will use this BCC. Greeting is nothing but opening of your actual message. That is example, hi sir or hi guys. Text represents the actual content. And signature is nothing but the final part of my email message. That it includes the name of the sender, address or the and the contact number. Now let us discuss the advantages of the email. Email has proved to be powerful and reliable medium of the communication. Let's discuss its benefits. First, it is reliable, convenient, speed, inexpensive, printable, global and generality. Reliable means many of the mail system notify the sender if email message was undeliverable. That, that we experience, experience through the Gmail. If we enter incorrect email address, then at that time that email goes bounce and we get the repeat email. So that is nothing but the reliability. Convenience, there is no requirement of stationery and stamp. All I can do is I can communicate it through a single email. One does not have to go to the post office. Speed, email is very fast. Within a fraction of a second I can send the email. Inexpensive, the cost of sending email is very low. I just need a email account. Printable, I can take a print of my email account. That is whatever email I sent, I can take a print, I can get a hard copy. So also an electronic copy of email can also be saved for records. I can save it as an PDF also and I can separate side, I can take a print. That is nothing but it's hard copy. Global. 
email can be sent and received by a person sitting across the globe and generality it also possible to send graphics programs and sounds with an email it's not just i can send only the documents i can also send graphics programs and sounds how email works so email system comprises of the three components mailer mail server and mailbox what is mailer it is also called as mail program mail application or i can say mail client basically it allows me to manage read and compose the email then what is mail server basically the function of mail server is to receive store and deliver the email it is must for mail servers to be running all the time because if it crashes or is down email can be lost then mailbox it is generally a folder that contains emails and information about them so email working follows the client server approach in this client is the mailer basically it works on what client server approach so in this client is my mailer that is the mail application or the mail program and server is my device that manages the email so let's take a example which will help us to explore what are the steps involved while sending and receiving the email so suppose a person a want to send an email message to person b a wants to send to b so basically a will what a will do what a will compose the message using what mailer program that is mail client and it will select the send option and the message is routed to smtp to the person's b mail server and the mail server stores the email message on the disk in an area designated to person b and suppose person b is running a pop client and knows how to communicate with b's mail server then it will periodically poll the pop server to check if any new email has arrived for b and in this case person b has sent an email for person b so the email is forwarded over the network b's pc and this is message this is this message is now stored on the person b's computer so the steps this is nothing but the diagramic view diagrammatic view of the steps we have discussed just now so as you can see in this diagram person a pc is shown and person b is also shown so look at it carefully now there are three email protocols smtp pop im imap let's quickly see that what is smtp simple mail transfer protocol so smtp is application level protocol it is connection oriented protocol and it is text based protocol apart from that smtp also provides notification regarding the incoming mail and it also specifies the senders and receiving email address along with the message to send imap IMAP is nothing but internet message access protocol it was first proposed in 1986 it allows the client program to manipulate the email messages on the server without download downloading them on the local computer that is the advantage using IMAP so email is hold and maintained by the remote server it enables us to create manipulate delete remote message folders called mailboxes so that is the advantage using IMAP and pop pop stands for post office protocol it is generally used to support a single client and there are several versions of this right now pop3 is the current standard it is application layer internet standard protocol since it supports offline access to the messages thus requires less internet usage time and it does not allow search facility in order to access the messages it is necessary to download them so that is the drawback as internet is not available it allows only one mailbox to be created on the server and it is not su suitable for accessing no non mail data what is ftp ftp i'll basically use in order to share the file that is file transfer protocol as the name indicates file transfer so it is a standard internet protocol provided by tcp ip which is used for transmitting the files from one system to the another so what is the main purpose of ftp for transferring the web page files from one system to the computer which acts as a server for other computers on the internet and it is also helpful for downloading the files to compute from other servers what are the objectives file sharing it encourages the use of remote computers and it is used to transfer the data reliably and efficiently 
features data representation file organization and data structure transmission mode error control access control now tcp connections that is whenever i am supposed to do the file transfer tcp connections are used there are two let's see that first is control connection second is data connection control connection that is for sending control information like user identification password commands to change the remote directory the commands to retrieve and store files so basically it control connection need a port number 21 and data connection for sending the actual file it need a port number 20 how it ftp works let's quickly see so client initiate karega conversation with server by requesting a download file now with the help of the ftp a client can delete upload download rename and even copy the file on a server so a user typically need to log on to the ftp server to use the available content this is nothing but the diagrammatic view which shows the mechanism of ftp as you can see here user interface is there and it is connected to the server so here client is there which is connected to the server what are the advantages speed efficient security back and forth movement speed one of the biggest advantage of ftp is speed it is fastest way to transfer the file efficient it is more efficient as we do not need to complete all the operations to get the entire file security as in order to access the ftp server i need to log in with the username and password so it is more secure and back and forth means it allows us to transfer the files back and forth so suppose you are a manager of the company you send some information to all the employees and they all send information back on the same server thank you